And uh, my dad was born and raised in Tiano. He came over at 27 years old. Yesterday was 27 years that we lost him. And um, so I just started last year kind of digging into ancestry and heritage and and when we were growing up, my siblings, my dad always used to, and when we were growing up, my siblings, my dad always used to talk about his parents, particularly his father. His name was Antonio. Antonio was um, an only child and he lost him during World War II. My dad was extremely young. He was uh, the uh, oldest son and of uh, four children. And during the war, my dad and his siblings were in a trench and he always told us the story that he uh, his father went back to the home you know small village and walked back to the home to check on a pig so that the germans wouldn't take it because it was late october actually october 31st we were told and he was gonna make sure the pig was okay and it didn't squeal and he was gonna go feed it so the germans wouldn't take it because it was their food for the winter and that was when the Germans killed my grandfather right at the door of his house. That was the story. Well, all of a sudden I put in my grandfather's name and up comes all these articles about him. I was actually searching, you know, to see, you know, when he was born and anything on his parents, because I knew about my grandfather. And I shared with my siblings, I'm like, oh my gosh, grandpa didn't go to the house to feed the pig, I said, Grandpa actually fought the Germans off in the war. It says here on this paper that he was actually killed by them and killed during, you know, the time that the war went on and his name is written on this paper, this document from the army, along with seven other people. And my siblings were like, you're kidding. Do you think dad knew? I said, I don't think dad knew. I think that was the story they told him because he was so young and they didn't want to traumatize him. He was already traumatized. And my father heard the people in the village screaming, you know, Antonio Cembella, Masada, Masada, Antonio Cembella. And my dad was going on 15 years old and he had a bullet, a stray bullet had hit him in the leg. The bullet never came out of his leg. He always had a gunshot wound in his leg that had healed and I and he got picked up by a concentration camp truck right after he heard his father had died and they made him get on the truck and my father from the ages of 10 to 12 lived with monks because he was naughty and they put him there to learn and to study and so my father knew five languages because he studied with the monks so he got on the truck and he overheard people talking and he understood what they were saying, that they were going to take him to a camp. So this is October 1943. So my dad said there were two little girls on there about his age, and he tried to get them to get off, and they were Polish girls. And he said they would not leave the truck. So when the soldiers stopped about 300 kilometers, he said, to go get gas, he jumped off the truck. And he hid behind a tree. And two nuns found him and they put him in a hospital, a church hospital, and he was full of bed bugs and sores and he was gone for about three months. He said his mother must have thought he died. They brought him back home. By then they had buried his father and, um, you know, life went on. His mother actually, I have a picture of his mother actually, um, I believe I sent you that his mother had to wash uniforms of the soldiers to make money later on they opened up a little gas station during the war but she washed the uniforms of the soldiers that killed his father